Washington Mornings on the Mall. At AM 630. A37 on WMAL. Brian Eman, Joe DeGeneva in this morning here on 105.9 FM, AM 630 WMAL, where Washington comes to talk. A lot of people talking about the Masters yesterday. Great finish. Bubba Watson, his first green jacket. Tiger Woods finished way back in the pack yesterday. Had another bad outing out of Gu- at Augusta. Hank Haney joins us now as a veteran PGA golf instructor, Tiger's former swing coach, and has a new book out about Tiger Woods called The Big Miss, My Years Coaching Tiger Woods. Hank, it's great to have you on. Listen, you've, you've taken a lot of heat for writing this book. I heard Curtis Strange the other day say that uh, you were violating the man code by writing this book. Um, why did you write this book about Tiger Woods, especially if Tiger didn't want you to write it? Well, I mean... Clearly, I'm not the first coach that's ever written a, a book, and you know that that was one of the things that I thought about. Um, when you're in a position like I was for six years to observe greatness on a daily basis, you're asked about it all the time, and you know I, I'm always asked about what was it like to work with Tiger, or what kind of things did you work on, how was it coaching him, and you know I, I decided that I wanted to share my memories, I wanted to share my thoughts, and when it was all said and done, I just thought to myself that you know what these aren't just tiger's memories he doesn't have an exclusive on them he doesn't have a patent on these memories they're my memories too and i wanted to uh talk about them so you know obviously i knew that some people would say hey you shouldn't have written a book but like i said i'm one of a long list of coaches that have written books i mean phil jackson wrote a book and joe torrey wrote a book and john wooden wrote a book and i mean there's just endless number of coaches who have written books i'm just another one that has all right so what made tiger great and i use the past tense there and can he still be great well i mean it, it's a really a, a whole bunch of things that make up you know the whole package if you will that that is tiger woods i mean it, it's it's technically it's physically it's mentally um you know he's just to me the the, the greatest player that's ever played the game and and yes i mean i think he can certainly you know get to greatness again i mean he's had a very good year already this year he didn't have a good masters for sure but uh but everybody has bad weeks and and this was certainly one of them for him yeah, the book is called the big miss um which i i understand is what tiger's fear was of 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 a big miss when he's swinging a golf club and it was that b- big fear the the driver and did we see that this weekend at augusta well every long hitter fears the big miss i mean bubba watson who won the masters yesterday said that when he hit it in the woods he said all he was thinking about was give me a swing just let me have a swing and the big miss is the shot that gives you no swing i mean the shot in the water the shot uh in the the bushes the the shot where you have no swing and and that's a shot that every golfer fears but especially a a long hitter and and yes tiger had quite a few of those unfortunately at augusta i mean he uh i think he had four penalty shots or hit at least hit it in in uh hazards um he was able to chip out of one of those but uh, those those are big misses and shots you can't recover from so hank uh, this is joe degenova thanks very much for being with us this morning um you know I, i talked to a lot of people uh, that have watched Tiger over the years, including some friends out in L.A. who would go to these pro-am things. And one of the things they said about him was his life and his attitude began to change when he started hanging out with Michael Jordan and Charles Barkley. No. Did, did you see that, or is that true? No, not not at all. I mean, first off, he didn't hang out with those guys, uh, I think, like like maybe people perceive him to have. He he went with them a, a couple times or met them a couple times in Las Vegas, uh, but I don't I don't see that that had had anything to do with it at all. Um, you know, they they weren't really big influential people. And in, in like when I was around them, I I uh, I saw him with Charles uh, maybe two times: once at, at in Orlando and once in, in Las Vegas. And then with Michael, I I saw about the same. Michael came to play golf with them one time. I mean, they, they weren't they weren't around that much. Uh, right. To blame to blame anything on them, I think would would just be yeah. Uh, 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 one of the things that. I noticed yesterday during the interviews after the uh, after the tournament, he seemed to have again this kind of almost uh, mechanical response to every question, like he was not. I mean, the guy doesn't seem to be able to open up. Is that is that what do you see in all of this? 
Well, I think that that is true. I mean, he's been dealing with the media for a long, long time. I mean, since he was a, a young man, and and he does tend to be, you know, a, a little mechanical on his answers for sure. And, and he definitely is is you know closed off. I mean, there's there's a wall up, and and even when you're around Tiger, like I was for a, uh, over a hundred days a year for six years, there still always seems to be a, a little bit of a wall up. Would, he obviously was living his life recklessly when you were a coach with you know the different women. You, you had no indication. You had no idea that was going on. No, I had no idea. I mean, um, I didn't know Steve Williams his caddy didn't know. Obviously, his wife didn't know. The first uh, indication that I had that there might be a problem was when Mark Steinberg, his, his agent, uh, called me a couple weeks before the scandal hit, and he told me that there was going to be an article coming out in the National Enquirer about Tiger and this girl, but that it was it was all uh, not true and that everything was going to be okay. Uh, and then he hit the fire hydrant, and obviously we found out that it was all true, that and a lot more, but I, I didn't know anything. Now, when I look back, you know, there were times when I thought to myself, you know, where where is he? And, you know, obviously I know now where he was. You know, you also say that he would go and train with the military. Now, were these retired military? I remember it was even Navy SEALs, and exactly what was he doing? Yeah, yeah so, so, sometimes, in some cases retired, and in a lot of cases, though, active. Uh, but some of, some of the uh, classes, if you will, or the training sessions were done by um, re- retired SEALs, and in some cases, uh, a- active SEALs. He went to two places on the East Coast and two places on the West Coast uh, and, and told me about numerous uh, different activities that he did, from parachute jumping to uh, firearms shooting to hand-to-hand combat, uh, self-defense, urban war- warfare simulation, um, and, and, uh, and this... actually a friend of his, who is also a friend of mine, went with him on three uh, oca- occasions to, to places on the East Coast, and there were Navy SEALs and Navy SEAL teams present, uh, and, you know, active. And uh, was this a way to get a mental advantage or mental edge? Uh, I'm not really, you know, I'm not sure totally what what his thought was, but there was a period of time when I thought, you know, he's actually he's actually considering becoming a Navy SEAL or trying to become a Navy SEAL. Hmm. All right, before we let you go, um, you also work with Rush Limbaugh on your on your golf, uh-huh. and, and Rush is on our radio station, so a lot of people listen to Rush. What what was your impression of Rush? Are there any similarities between Rush and Tiger? And I mean that, but I mean that you know, Rush is one of the best broadcasters around, and Tiger's one of the best golfers around. Can you kind of compare them, or and, and just your general experience with Rush? Well, I'll t- I t- I tell you what. I mean, one of my biggest challenges with, with Tiger, and he's such a great achiever, was trying to just lead him in the right direction and figure out ways to make it his idea. Um, Rush, to be honest with you, was probably one of the best, if not the best, listener that I've ever taught. Uh, he was a, he was a great student, and uh, and uh, he was, you know, an unbelievable listener. And I was I was really proud of how he did, and and he was a, a great student to help. And were you really ticked off when he showed up with that Steelers jersey on when you guys were playing? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I thought that was pretty good though. <laughs> All right, Hank, Greg, thanks for coming on. We appreciate it. Best of luck with.